Hi everyone, welcome to my Sherline studio. I'm Sybil Mustick. Behind the camera is Joshua Blanc. Today we're looking again at our transfers. Now I've been having trouble with transfers since we changed our printer's ink. So we've been trying all sorts of strange and wonderful things to try and uh, use the different uh, inks that we put in our printer so that uh, we will get transfers again. So we've had to manipulate uh, my uh, computer uh, programs so that we can get uh, a more high intensity black. So what I've done is I've put some settings on fine and more edge control and also we're going to be introducing something called GIMP. Uh, Josh will take you through that and uh, we will show how we have switched things around so that we get a better image. Now, last night I was doing um, some printing and uh, with this new image, uh, this is uh, actually reversed on GIMP so that the whites are black and the blacks are white. Now this one, um, you, if I hope you can see the shininess of it. And here's the first transfer that we did. Now this is on deli paper. And deli paper tends to wrinkle when you uh, put it on the gel plate, which sometimes is interesting. But, and so then you get this because I use black and a little bit of Prussian blue. And then uh, that was our first layer for doing the transfer. So then I did it once more, just using this. And look at this fabulous uh, transfer. And I used a couple of colors, uh, I think, a couple of things, Amsterdam paints, of course. Um, and uh, this is orange, just orange, azo orange. And I think one other one here. And uh, what's this one here? Um, Naples uh, yellow. And this is ultramarine blue. So our blacks printed really well. The reversal really helped. And the fine uh, on the uh, blacks gave us the opportunity to get a good transfer. And I didn't take the, the uh, uh, on the printer, it has an option to pl uh, print the black in color. And so it, it gives us this strange blue tone but we did get a good print as a result. So I'll, I'll give you over to Josh so that uh, he can take you through the process and he'll explain step-by-step uh, step, uh, what we have to do on... Uh, now I have a, a, Mac, uh, um, a MacBook Pro and uh, so uh, we're doing working from iPhoto and getting, you know, importing from iPhoto into the GIMP program. Um, okay, so we're gonna, we have a, an image on the desktop here and we're going to open GIMP, which is our editing program. You might have Photoshop at home uh, or something similar. This one is free and open source, so it's easily obtainable. Now to get the file in there, you can drag it in from the desktop or um, open it from the file menu. Cabin one, there it is. Convert. All right, so this is what we start with. Uh, just your regular color image. For starters, we will make it black and white. So right click on the image, go to colors. Um, easiest way to do this is take the hue saturation uh, filter and then drag saturation all the way to zero, gives you black and white. Okay, so now we have black and white. Uh, next step is to um, basically make it a negative image. Right click again, colors, and invert. So black becomes white, white becomes black, and uh, all the grays in between. Um, and then uh, we'll do one more thing just to see how it looks. Um, again, colors posterize and this just simplifies the the grayscale to 
fewer values. So it's more like a pen and ink drawing, I suppose you could say. And you can customize how many levels. This is three. Uh, we could have a look at, uh, and there's four, and, and so on. And there's eight, ten. And the, the fewer you have, the more simpler it'll be, right down to two, which is just black and white. Anyway, there we have it. Well, we tried the posterized one, and it's, it's basically two shades. The white is the white of the paper, we have the gray, and we have the black. Now, as you can see, it's not very shiny, and you need that resist. So you're better off printing with color, uh, even though you've made the color into black and white. But it, the color is, there's various shades of gray, and Josh was saying is what 256 shades of gray that make up our black and white color, right? Yeah. So we, um, and of course we tried it and it failed. So, but when we went, and that's with posterizing. So when we do just the reverse. The inversion of the image. Yeah, this is the inversion. And uh, this is the cabin image that we're working with. Now we can't, um, this takes time to settle, and I've got a couple in the freezer. We might try, um, <laughs> we might try it later, but uh, for now you can see there's not much of a shine to it, so it's probably going to fail as well. But we have one. First of all, remember this, this is the one that was printed before where we had that beautiful image, and um, and this is also a, a day or two old now, so we can try either one. But let's try uh, just for experimental sake, and it could be a total fail. Change <laughs> <laughs> things enough. So, uh, that's right. And uh, but I, it should be good because you can see the shine on here. So let's try it for the third time, which means that uh, it's good for you to know because that means you can try these ones you've printed already several times. So that's pretty economical so anyway let's give it a shot so again we're starting with uh, our oxide uh, or carbon black and uh, a little bit of the prussian blue i'm just hedging my bets because uh, black does not have um, a depth of color that you need, the saturation if you like. So by mixing the two, you still get black, but I have a fair amount of paint on here and we probably need to take some of it off. You want a light coat. So not too thick and not too thin. You just have to experiment till you get the right quality. You'll, you'll see it when it works. Just taking a bit more off. If you start seeing the blue, then you know it's right. Too much blue and you know it's gone too far. Okay, so for the third time, And light touch. I find my Baron is really good for that. Leave it for a few seconds and then try it. Then look at this. This is the third one. And look at the intensity there. Wow. All right, we're going to let this dry. We'll take an interlude, and then we'll put some color on there. And we could probably even do it a fourth time. It's still shiny. Okay, ready to print here. 
Now it's gotten a bit darker because uh, this piece is deteriorating. It's still shiny as you can see, but some areas are getting obscured now. So this is the third generation of this. And we're going to put a little bit, now again, less is more. Just going to brighten this up a little bit more. And our ultramarine blue. So a little goes a long way here. This should maybe be greenish, I guess, by the time we yellow and blue make green, as you know. Brayer it off so it doesn't mix so much. Don't really want the green. So it's just like a shadow tone in the background. Make sure you can see the image. It's very important that it's transparent for your transfer and not too dry. So here we go. Now again, this is uh, our oriental paper we're printing on. It seems to pick up the transfer really well. I touched down here slightly, that's not good, but anyway. Now we're going to have to wait on this one so that it takes up all the image. More waiting. <laughs> Okay, so while we're waiting for that uh, print to set so that we can pull it off and see what the image is all about, we're going to have some fun uh, with this whole process. Now, the whole reason I even uh, looked at this is that I want to talk about vantage points. Now, with a lot of artwork, uh, you have the usual, you know, nice compositions and so forth. And ho-hum, I mean, you know, so many people do that. And you want to maybe do something a little bit different. So vantage point is a big help for this. Now, vantage point in this case has to do a little bit with perspective. And it, uh, you know, shows an image looking down at your feet. So you're, you can see, you know, the perspective here that it's widening here as you're going up for the feet. And looking down. So if you were say a helicopter and on top of a large building you would see the building going down to practically nothing because that's our uh, perspective point uh, if you're going to do three-point perspective and it's the very bottom. And of course looking up it's the same way if you're looking up at like a tree then your tree trunk is really big and it goes up to next to nothing as you're looking up at it, same with buildings. So, and we'll talk about perspective and, and maybe rule some of that at some time. But today is just vantage point. So, you know, this is really an unusual vantage point where you're just looking at your feet. And in terms of artwork, it's kind of fascinating. So I've already sort of done some preliminary work. I've just um, traced off the feet here and then cut them out and we're going to be printing them on the gel plate. And I have made a little stencil here um, of these things. I've, it's pretty close in size. It's about four inches by four inches. So, and so it's not so boring. We're going to make some marks on here. And as we print, we just need some kind of a stylus or something. And we're going to just do some dots and Hopefully that prints. So now we'll probably use some other textures as well. That's what gel plate printing is all about.
And I kind of enjoyed this shape and we might do something with the little pieces that we cut out as well. And you can see in the, in the photograph, you know, these uh, uh, cement plates or whatever, bricks or it's, it's a boat launch. So it helps the boats because uh, then they have a good gripping surface for the tires as they're backing up their trailers with their boats on them. So they can get them in and out safely without um, polluting the water with exhaust, which is very important. And here at Bushy Lake, we have um, nice rainbow trout. As a matter of fact, the guys are supposed to go out um, ice fishing sometime today, so we'll see if we have trout for dinner. Yeah, they're good uh, two, three pound rainbow trout, so. They do stock the lake, so. And they can grow to a pretty good size. Probably not more than three pounds. That's a pretty hefty fish for. Uh, what else can we do here? We could probably maybe make some cutting marks. See if that. See how far line goes. We'll really rough up the surface. Okay, and then. Uh, We'll get some paper here for we can ink it up. So what we're going to do is uh, we'll put some color on there. Hmm. You know, I kind of like this weird gray violet color. So why don't we try a little bit of that? out of harm's way. Roll us out. It can be quite transparent, which is good. Now we're going to flip this for now. And whoops. And first of all, we're going to do this kind of thing. And we'll just use a paper towel so I don't muck things up. And then little stylus will help get it up again. We're getting some nice texture here. It's okay, it slides a little bit. That would just be interesting. Ooh, fun stuff. Give it some space. Get rid of that for now. And my feet. When we print that, uh, the feet were going to be negative. Okay, 
believe it or not. Okay, so quickly we're going to do some marks just to be interesting. Just the little pebbly things that were in there. Have to work fast because our paint is drying. I'm not the speediest person when it comes to gel printing, so I tend to add things like medium or extender or things that make things last a little bit longer. You can also use the open acrylics. I'm not really thinking as I'm making these marks, I'm just sort of doing things haphazard and at random, which probably makes them more interesting. If you think too much about this kind of thing, it's not going to happen. Okay, so let's lift it up. Right, ready to print here. And we're going to make sure it's registered this time because we have to do the feet. Now we go back to our image here and uh, we'll just take a brush and we're just going to add some details. So there's this line here. I'm just using that purple that we had that might be interesting. Yeah, we just color it purple here at the side. And then the lacings. Maybe a little bit of tone there. And the shoes are up to here, and that's the end of the jeans. More tone. You can take your time with this because we're going to print that with the gel, you know, the um, super matte medium. Okay, same for here. You have a little bit of everything here that's you've got stencil the only thing we don't have is uh, transfer so okay for our laces and you can take your time with the painting the edge of the jeans here. And we'll go into the blue. Did we have blue? We don't have blue. Okay. Okay. This is our Prussian blue Amsterdam paint. So no, remember we've reversed everything here. But that's okay. It works the way it is. These lines would actually be the dark lines. And they show up white. 
There's a bit of a line here. You can add a bit of color. There's a seam here, and just and this one just will correct the shape a little bit because it's wider than that. Now I just remembered that this is a reverse image, so this is this one here is actually this one here. Because when we flip it, it'll be like that. If I put my finger there, I'll I'll remember that that's this one, right? So we've got this line. And there's sort of a shadow area here. Some nice little details. And we can probably even do the laces in blue so that they show up something different. And maybe the seam here. Okay, so this one is here. So we have, we've got this line in already. We haven't got this line in yet. And then this one. As far as the texture of the fabric, well, you could try for it with little lines and things like that, but it's just too much detail. We don't need it. There's a couple lines here. I've cropped off this doesn't, we don't have quite the length of leg that we had in the photograph. Because we want the effect of this more. Okay, so now we're going to get the medium. These paints, uh, I wanted to talk about the fluid acrylics. This carbon black is really good for transfers. That's why I use it. It really does help. And the other one is just the same. It's just a fluid acrylic uh, golden. And the other ones are Amsterdam paints. Okay. This is our super matte golden medium. Awesome stuff. It takes a little longer to dry. So just a light color. Or a light uh, surface here. Yeah. 
and it should dry um, in a few minutes. So we've registered our paper. It should go right back where it's supposed to. And then it will print all the details of the feet. So we'll take an interlude, we'll let this dry, and then we'll do the reveal. And then, if nothing else, we're going to reveal the transfer we have uh, waiting in the wings here. Okay. So we're going to reveal our previous uh, transfer and this was the third generation of the transfer. And it's going to be extremely dramatic. Wow. <laughs> Too bad I touched the end there. Look at this. So it might go one more, but then I think a lot of this would be obscured in, in a really dark color and the very lightest lights will only stay revealed. But still, now we have three uh, layers of this. And we'll show them all at the end as usual but I really like that. So we're back in the transfer business now that we know about how to do this. So just to recap, uh, we did um, reversal and uh, of the image and I put it on fine in the printer and I think edge control, or did we take off the edge? Edge was maximum, right? Okay, so those things you can do if you're using uh, a generic um, uh, black um, printer's ink, which isn't quite as uh, powerful as a regular HP ink. But there's ways of getting around it without paying your $250 for a new black ink, <laughs> which I don't want to do. <laughs> I mean, I could go to Walmart or, or a few other places and, and get the print done that way. But, you know, I'm fairly spontaneous and I can't be bothered doing that. You know, once I get it printed, I want to run and, and get down to the studio and work with it, you know, instead of running all the way uptown, spending gas money, et cetera, et cetera. We don't want to go there. And we have a good result. This was the first one. Not so great. Second one, much better. And look at the third one. Woohoo. Plus our little moment... Uh, we still have that to print, but I'll say goodbye for now and we'll put that on a little later when we uh, can reveal that one. So thanks so much for watching and uh, going through all our arduous process of trying to get our transfers to work under um, adverse circumstances. But hey, we, we got it captured and, you know, you can do it too. So. Be kind to one another, take care of yourselves and your families. Bye for now. <laughs>
So here's a print of us working um, with our little stencil and painting the feet. Working with a different vantage point. And just having a whole lot of fun with this process. Oh, we lost a little bit there, but that's okay. What I'll do is I will put more, just a little bit more medium on that. And when we show it at the end, it will probably have this on there. So turned out pretty good.